Hello and welcome back to video 4 where we're going to be looking at test data but more importantly trace tables. Trace tables. This is part of um, topic 7 algorithm design and problem solving for the IGCSE in computer science. As you can see we need to suggest and apply suitable test data but we've got a completed trace table to document a dry run of an algorithm and we'll do flowcharts and we'll do pseudocode for that. So we're using test data to check our code. It is important to test algorithms to check how they perform under a range of conditions. This includes testing any validation you have created to ensure it performs as expected. When creating a testing plan, the test data that you use shouldn't be random values, but rather values and how um, you would expect the program to perform. So basically the data would work and it would allow the program to work. It's upper and lower limits basically testing it to its limits and then the data that should be rejected i.e. if you're expected to input numbers and you write words um, this should be rejected or if you're putting in your ATM pin and it's a five digit pin code and you put in six then again it would be rejected so before performing a test you need to decide what data you are going to use it's not always possible to perform tests with every single piece of data within the code so instead developers will choose from a limited range of data such as these three areas. We've got valid data which we've just mentioned. This is sensible possible data that the program should accept and be able to process i.e. an 8 digit password should be allowed for 8 digits. Extreme and boundary data. This is valid data that falls at the boundary of any possible range and can be used to test what breaks the program. For example, if we're only allowing the numbers 1 to 100 and we put the number 100 in, will it still work? Because it's changing from two numbers to three numbers. And then of course we've got invalid or erroneous data. This is, um, this is code, this is data that the program cannot process and should not accept. So here's some examples. So valid data. If a program asks a user to enter a number less than 50, so x is less than 50, a valid test data would be 7 or any number between 0 and 49. Extreme data, if a program asks the user to enter a number greater than 40 but less than 50, x is greater than 40 and x is less than 50, if in this scenario the number 41 and 49 are the boundary numbers that should be accepted by the program, numbers 40 and numbers 50 are boundary numbers that should be rejected. Okay, because we've got less than and more than signs in there, less than and greater than signs. And finally, invalid data. If a program asks the user to enter a number less than 50, i.e. x is less than 50, an invalid test data would be 55, or any number greater than 50. Another invalid test data would be a string like apple, as it is not a number and should be rejected. If you ask, um, so if the program asks you to type in a number less than 50 and you type in the word apple, well, that's not right, is it? Okay. We move on now to the very important section of trace tables. Now, these you will either get or you won't in the first instance, but I'm going to give you a couple of examples. When testing more complex examples of software, it is sometimes necessary to test a number of conditions and subconditions at the same time. For this, a trace table can be used to record the outcomes of the test. So here is an example of a very simple trace table where we check that x equals y plus 3, so x would equal 16, and so on and so forth. Okay, so we're checking against this data and against this data, but that's maybe a little bit too simplified. What I'm going to take you on to, here we have a question from the exam to explain how a trace table can be used. In this case, we can input number data into this flowchart to establish how it would be processed and then output it. We will use the following test data. We've got a series of numbers here. Okay, so let us start with our test data plan. This is the test data, this is the flowchart. I've entered the variables and the output across the top of our trace table. So we've got, and this in an exam you would get the actual trace table itself with the headers. So we can make a start. The variable engine, count and number are, have all been assigned zero and then we're going to input the size. This test data is the size so once we input the size that would go in there 1.8. Okay 
is the size less than 1? Well, no, it's not. Is the size greater than 1.5? Yes, it is. So we're going to add um, to the count, count plus 1. So count should be 1. Okay, where do we go next? It comes back round. Number then is assigned number plus 1. And then finally, engine is assigned engine plus size. We're going to put size into the engine, or rather 0 plus 1.8. So 1.8 goes in there. Okay, now we're going to run the test program again. We're going to come around the flowchart again. This time we're going to use the number 2, 2.0. So in we pop 2.0. Is the size minus 1? No. Is the size greater than 1.5? Yes, it is. So again, we add 1 to the count, we add 1 to the number, and then we total, we start totaling the engine size. So we've added 2 to 1.8. Okay, next one should be 1. Now this is a little bit different, because when we go down, we've inputted the size, is it minus 1? No. Is it greater than 1.5? No, it's not. So all we do then is go straight onto number, which we've added, and we go straight onto the engine size, which we add 1 to. So 3.8 becomes 4.8, and then we go around again. As you can see, if this line here was to go to the top, then we will be resetting engine counter and number to zero all the time, but it's not, it's coming in here. So, we go around again, 1.3. Okay, what have we added? We've added a one, because 1 1.3 is less than 1.5, and we add 1.3 to the total, we're now on 6.1. Um, we add one. Okay, the number is five, because we, we, we're down here now, and then we add one to the engine size. What have we got next? 1, 2.5. So now, 2.5. Again, because we've gone 2.5, we're adding 1 to the count, because it's greater than 1.5. We add 1 to the number, and we add to the engine size. Okay, now we're on 2. So we add 2 here. Again, 2 is greater than 1.5, but it's not minus 1. So we add 1 to the count, 1 to the number. We add to the engine size, so it's now 11.6, and we come around again. Now we're on 1.3, so we've gone less than. So, add 1 to the number, because we've come down here now, and we add to the engine size. Okay, here we are. Now we're on 1.8, so 1.8 goes into the size. Yeah. Is it greater than 1.5? Yes, it is, so we need to add to the count. Then we add to the number, then we total up the engine size. So we're on 14.7 and we're currently here. We've got two numbers left. So 1.3 gets added. This of course is less than 1.5. So 1 to the number and then we total up and we're now on 16 for the engine size. Now we're on to our final number in our test data which is minus 1. Now minus 1 will affect this so we're going to input minus 1 is the size, does the size equal minus 1? Yes, it does this time. So now average um, is, has been assigned the engine and um, divided by the number. So we've got engine divided by the numbers. This should be 1.6, 16 divided by 10. Okay. And then finally, so we've got that. We've assigned 1.6 because we've divided 16 by 10. Output the average count. Okay. So, we've got count, which currently equals 5, and we've got average. So in here, average 1.6, comma, count, which equals 5. And that is it. So we've gone round and round the trace table, and we've got the final little bit of information in terms of the, the final bit of data, and this has given us our output right at the very end. Then the program stops. Okay? So that's how we would do a trace table. These in the exam are not worth a great deal of points. Maybe the five, six points for this. If you get all the numbers right in a particular column, so this one's only got one number in it, but you've got all these numbers in this first column, you'll get one point, one point, one point, one point, and you should get a total of six points for that, which doesn't seem a lot for the amount of duh, 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 tracing round. But once you've got it, it is, as you can see, fairly straightforward. I'm going to do another one now, but this time with some pseudocode. So, I've got my um, my test data. We have signed these values 0 to A, 0 to B, and 100 to C. I put those in. 
bop, bop, bop. And then we move down to output, output NTR 10 values. So in here, NTR 10 values. Okay, repeat the following. Input X, okay, I've inputted four, okay. If X is greater than B, which it currently is, then B, then X has been assigned to B. So four should get assigned to B, okay. And if, if, and I've put a four in here, if X is less than C, which it is, because C is 100, then C is assigned the value of X. So all of these now become 4. And if A equals A plus 1. There we go. Until A equals 10. So we're going to do this 10 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay? So we carry on working through. Input X. If X is greater than B. So it is. Yeah. If X is less than C, well it's not, so we leave that and we put a 2 in there. And we carry on, and to 19. If X is greater than B, which it is, we put it in there. If X is less than C, well it's not, so we just add 3 to there. And we carry on 17. Okay, so input 17. X is greater than B, well no it's not, so that gets left alone. X is less than C. Well, no, it's not. So we add another 1 to A. And we carry on. 3 now. So now, now we've got a bit of a change. If X is greater than B, then B becomes X. Well, it's not, is it? Um, if X is less than C, which it is, 3 is less than 4. So we pop that in there. Okay, and then we add a 1 to there. So A becomes 5. Carry on. 11. Okay, 11. If x is greater than b, well, 11 is not greater than b, so that gets left alone. If x is less than c, well, it's not, so that gets left alone. So I've added 1 to the column here. 6. Okay, if x is greater than b, well, no, it's not, then it gets left alone. If x is less than c, well, no, it's not. So we just add seven. We just add a one to the um, to the A column. We now move on to number one. Okay, if X is greater than B, is one greater than nineteen? No. If X is less than C, well, I guess it is. So C becomes one. We add one to the um, A column. Um, Thirteen. Here we go. If X is greater than B, no, it's not. If X is less than C, well, no, it's not. So again, one more to the column. Now we're on to our final digit, number 9. Okay. If x is greater than b, no it's not. If x is less than c, no it's not. So all I'm going to do there is put 10 in that column. Now we're at 10 numbers until a equals 10. So then, we've come around here, until a equals 10, a equals 10. So what we're going to do, we're going to output b and c. So it should output the values um, b, which is 19 and C, which is 1. And there we go. So it's outputted those values. So we've gone all the way around the test data and it's worked and it's given us those values. That's it. So each one of these is basically a loop around the, um, around the code. Okay, I hope that makes sense to you. Um, have a go, have a practice, do some past paper questions um, and you'll get it. It's fairly straightforward. But that is it for this video. So thank you very much indeed for watching. Please continue to ask questions, leave your comments, hit notifications, and please subscribe. And finally, if you wish to buy me a coffee, I'd be truly grateful. Please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone. Thank you very much indeed. See you next time. Bye for now.